DC2 resolution declaring the investigation and arrest of individuals involved, in the involved with the personal use, growth, and possession of uh, ethogenic plants, including those scheduled at state and federal levels, be the lowest priority for the city of Ann Arbor, moved by council member Bannister, second by council member Hayner. Discussion, please, of DC2. Council member Ackerman. Uh, council member Hayner, you're a sponsor. If you want to go first, please. Oh, uh, well, that's okay. I just only only briefly to uh, give everybody a heads up that I distributed the, the text that is not the same text that is in Legistar. It's the resolve clause has been modified, and the um, the whereas clauses have been modified only in as much as we removed all the footnotes to make for a little cleaner reading. Um, so go go ahead. I'll just I'll yield back. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I have to move to substitute the language, so. Right. Why well, don't, uh, I, I think it might make sense to discuss that version, so, so to have one conversation as opposed to two. All right, so Council Member Hayner, you want to make, make your motion? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd move that I, um, I don't know if you want me to read it in, or I did share it through the clerk, that I subs we substitute the language wholesale with the language that I just shared with you, um, specifically, um, it affects the resolve clauses, uh, it affects the whereas clauses in removing the footnotes, and the resolve clauses have have changed from what was published in Legistar. So um, I'd move that those, I don't know if you want me to read it in or what, but that's my motion. Yeah, that perhaps read, read, if you would, the, the altered resolve clauses to the members of the public will have a notion of where we're going with this. Sure, <laughs> so that's fine. So be resolved that the mayor and city council hereby declare that it shall be the policy of the city of Ann Arbor that the investigation and arrest of persons for planting, cultivating, purchasing, transporting, distributing, engaging in practices with or possessing entheogenic plants or plant compounds, which are on the federal schedule one list shall be the lowest law enforcement priority for the city of Ann Arbor. And be it further resolved that the mayor and city council call upon the Washington County prosecutor to cease prosecution of persons involved in the use of entheogenic plants or plant based compounds designated by the Federal Controlled Substances Act. And be it further resolved that this resolution does not authorize or enable the commission of any crimes and be it further resolved that any significant violation of state or federal law or any use of entheogenic plants that poses a threat to the public health, safety and welfare may result in law enforcement involvement by the city of Ann Arbor and be it further resolved, the final one remains the same, that if any provision of this resolution is declared by a court of competent jurisdiction to be contrary to any statute, regulation, or judicial decision, so that its applicability to any agency, person, or circumstances held in valid, the validity of the remainder of this resolution and its applicability to any other agency, person, or circumstance shall not be affected. Is that friendly to the body? I'm sorry, is there a second? Second by Councilor Robin Wiley, is that friendly to the body? That's friendly. Councilmember Hayner, you still have the floor. Um, well, okay. I mean, uh, I, I, I was happy to, uh, to ask Ann to co-sponsor this. Ann did all the, the legwork on this uh, early last spring when she, she introduced me to the folks from Decriminalize Ann Arbor, uh, the local chapter, and made me aware of the, the national movement underway. Um, I think that these plants have, uh, I think the, the, the the intent of this is to decriminalize the use of this as best we are able as a council um, to allow for personal use research uh, to give the uh, folks who are doing uh, cutting edge research and, and mental health uh, issues more tools uh, to remove the stigma around the use of these plants and possession of these plants. Uh, it's in keeping with the 2018 Federal Right to Try Act where folks are experimenting uh, and, and using these to great relief in uh, uh, end of life situations. Um, it doesn't uh, endorse the use. We're not seeking to create a, um, a tourist climate or a, 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 a commercial climate around use of these plants here in Ann Arbor. I know that some other countries in Europe do this. Um, uh, Amsterdam uh, allows the sale of um, psychedelic plants. And uh, they, they, they a few years back, they had some trouble with it. And famously, the mayor said, um, we don't have a, 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 a psychedelic plant problem, we have a tourism problem. And so in, we're, we're not trying to endorse any sort of creation of anything other than to remove the, the, uh, the um, uh, stigma on it locally uh, through law enforcement. Um, there's, we've heard so many good reasons from the folks, um, historical, uh, medicinal, spiritual, uh, that it 
puts us back in, in touch with nature and that um, it uh, encourages individual responsibility and responsible use. And so uh, that combined with the fact that they're, they appear to not be addictive and that um, they represent uh, this great body of traditional ecological knowledge, I encourage my uh, colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you. Mr. Ackerman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'll, I'll be honest, I tried to avoid this issue uh, when it first came up. Mr. Reem is a constituent of mine, uh, but he um, uh, pre pre COVID invited uh, me and Councilmember Grand out to coffee and, and we had a conversation and it caused me to start digging into the topic uh, further. Um, and after a, a lot of research aided by a, a personal friend who's a psychology researcher, um, you know, I, I have formed an opinion, which I hope is based in, in logic. Um, first of all, I, I think to the public who's going to inevitably read newspaper articles about this, um, I recognize that this uh, seems like a, a very silly topic of, of debate. Psychedel psychedelics at, at large have developed a, a very special and goofy place in our national culture. Um, and the legacy of very misguided government initiatives like MK Ultra. Uh, cast a very long shadow. Um, but, uh, but for us, th this measure does represent a serious decision. Uh, after uh, extensive research, you know, I've come to the, the realization that you really only need to spend about 15 minutes with the modern research on psychedelic medicine to realize uh, that this is a serious topic with uh, potentially serious benefits. Um, to give some perspective, Johns Hopkins, a premier medical research university, just launched a $17 million center dedicated exclusively to researching the medical benefits of these substances because Johns Hopkins and their donors see the tremendous uh, potential uh, of these, of these uh, future medicines. Um, in, in particular, the medical research um, around psilocybin is, is undeniably inspiring and hopeful. As a person in long-term recovery myself, the, the astonishing results of studies among cocaine addicts and veterans with PTSD seem especially promising. Uh, ultimately, to be, to be very clear, I think medicalization is the much more responsible route to normalization rather than decriminalization. But I recognize that decriminalizing these substances today causes more harm um, than the decriminalization would cause in the future. Um, and so uh, I'll be supporting this, this tonight. I think also in 2020, we need to be looking for ways to decrease the number of police interactions that happen in our community and decriminalization of what are generally safe substances is, is a place to start. Um, finally, uh, and Council Member Hayner touched on this, uh, I, I don't believe it's the intent of these advocates, um, but any future council should be very wary of moves to make these substances recreational. Um, again, they, they're, they're powerful uh, as, as I read about them, um, but, but need to be harnessed, uh, I believe, for, for medicine, um, most importantly. Further discussion? Council Member Hainer. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, uh, Councilman Ackerman. I, I agree. I think that um, I, I understand that uh, the, a medical route is kind of, you know, clinical use is kind of what we are, are looking at and what these folks mostly uh, the experience has been with that. And I agree with that. Um, you know, we, we can sort of famously uh, uh, decriminalize, effectively decriminalize or, or dramatically reduce the criminalization of marijuana with the $5 fine. And you know we could do a thing like that and kind of say we recognize that state and federal law is going to keep this a criminal just like it does with uh, well until recently state law but federal just like federal law continues to do for marijuana but I think that um, you know, taking the stigma away reducing police interactions and so on is is important and so uh, um, yeah we actually went around with the language you you spoke to that notion of future bodies being aware of it and I actually considered that should we put something in the language to talk about that but I think we'll leave that for future bodies and we've seen that so far this is playing out okay in the other cities and I don't know if Mike uh, Chief Cox has anything to say I know back in the spring Ann and I spoke with you about this um, and we had some assurances that it already was sort of a low thing because we have a very progressive community and progressive uh, police leadership so I just th thanks for your comments. 
Well, um, you know, certainly it's, uh, we've had about, honestly, six arrests for this since 2017, and that's zero for this year. So um, the resolution currently is, it's, is certainly put out there now, probably re reflects the reality of, of, of what we're currently, you know, doing as far as looking into this. I, the only thing that I would ever caution is that I worry sometimes when, when you um, shift the burden from the person in violation of a law, uh, from that person to the people who are enforcing the law. So I, I just caution stuff like that when, when you do stuff, um, you know, when things are, you have the ability at some point, or at least legally, at, um, the state might have the ability to decriminalize something and, and, and that might be an answer to something. But I just worry sometimes when we um, shift that burden around or whatever, particularly in light of what's going on nowadays. But otherwise, that, that's about all that I have to say. Council Member Lum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Chief Cox. That was helpful. Uh, I, I appreciate that we're working with the substitute that incorporates the attorney's recommendations. I, uh, the various um, revisions that were recommended by the attorney to address the concerns uh, that, the, that the city should um, which language preventing the city from utilizing any resources or funds in investigating detention or prosecution was not reasonable. That's been addressed or appropriate. I agree with that. Um, and also that, that, that the, uh, the concern about the, that the language could have hindered the investigation of more serious criminal activities, that's been addressed. Uh, and revising the second resolve, as you did, Mr. Hainer, um, so that it's clear that the resolution doesn't authorize the commission of, of any crimes. Um, uh, and as originally writ written, a couple of other specific crimes were mentioned, but um, it, again, it should be unambiguous and that the resolution doesn't authorize any other crimes. Um, so thank you for incorporating those rec recommend recommended changes. Uh, I would not have been able uh, to support the original version uh, because I shared the concerns expressed by staff that is originally written. Um, the policy could have uh, serious negative unintended consequences, including potentially hindering, again, the investigation of some more serious crimes and exposing the city to potential liability. Uh, those are risks I, I, that I didn't feel the city should be taking. Um, but again, fortunately, by adopting the substitute uh, version, uh, those, those risks are dramatically mitigated. Um, and to be real honest, I'm not particularly comfortable heading down the path where we selectively, you know, enforce laws and tell the police uh, what laws they should be serious about and which ones are, you know, quote, lower priorities. Um, I did ask if there were other examples where the city had declared enforcement of a law a low priority and the answer was no, that this would be a first. Um, I know others will disagree, um, but I just don't... Uh, believe that that's a good precedent to set or the right approach. Uh, in my view, um, I believe it's much better to lobby to have uh, the laws changed um, than to set, uh, you know, policy that enforcement should is the lowest priority. Um, we've certainly heard from a lot of, uh, and tonight included, uh, advocates uh, for addressing this in this fashion. And I appreciate what you shared, Council Member Ackerman, about your meeting with Mr. Reem. Um, and also share your, um, the, fact, the fact that you were persuasively convinced that this is um, an okay path uh, to, uh, to follow uh, is compelling to me. Uh, in addition to, again, the, the, the fact that the changes incorporate the attorney's recommendations um, so I appreciate that we have this substitute version on the table. Um, I also, you know, I, I, I know that the, the sponsors feel passionately about this and, uh, and um, I thank you for, for your work on this. Uh, I, with the substitute version, I, I believe I can see my way to a yes on the, on the resolution. And I do think that as a, it's an important caveat that that you touched upon, Council Member Ackerman, that uh, that this is intended for medically prescribed uses, not recreational. Um, I'm, a lot older, I'm a lot older than a number of you, and uh, I lived through those days. Uh, I didn't personally imbibe 
with uh, psychedelic mushrooms, but I certainly, you know, interacted with people who did, I'll just say it. And uh, uh, I, I, this is a, as proposed, uh, you know, going forward, people, council members, future council members, and the community should uh, treat that distinction uh, seriously. So thank you. Council member Griswold. Um, another measure of the legitimacy of this product for treatment is that Bloomberg News reports that uh, a UK company had patented a synthetic version of what they're calling the magic mushrooms for use in treatment resistant depression. Uh, it started trading on NASDAQ last Friday and the shares jumped 71% in one day. So uh, I, I think that shows that there is serious consideration for this product and uh, confident, confidence that it's going to be an excellent treatment um, product. Council Member Ron Lally. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, appreciate um, the courage Council Member Bannister showed in bringing this to Council. As we know, um, we've been being lobbied uh, by the local chapter to adopt a resolution um, asking for for justice, um, and so um, uh, I again just wanted to acknowledge um, council members for bringing this forward, um, and uh, I'll, I'll be supporting it tonight for all the reasons that have been stated. Um, and it's unfortunate that that's how drug policies work in America, it's uh, what makes more money, uh, criminalizing it or, you know, advancing the medical benefits of them, uh, whether it's this or, or marijuana, we see a shift in American policy now with, with drugs. Um, there was much more money to be made with criminalization of these drugs. And now uh, there is a a realization of the profit to be made. And so uh, it's, it's unfortunate. There's been a lot of people who have been caught in the crossfire and who are serving time and who had their lives ruined um, in the process of, of the sausage being made. Uh, but uh, again, I just appreciate uh, uh, this being brought up and, and, uh, and I'll be supporting it tonight. Thank you. Council member Eaton. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the sponsors bringing this forward, and I especially appreciate the members of the community who have provided us with uh, considerable literature on this the topic. The literature is clear that there are clinical and religious uses that are beneficial, and that um, it, it's inappropriate to criminalize this kind of behavior. Um, what this resolution does is it directs our police department to de-emphasize enforcement of these laws, much like we did in the 70s with regard to marijuana. When we passed a $5 fine for marijuana, we were directing our police force to do other things than petty drug busts. Much like when we passed our immigrant status ordinance, we were directing our police department um, away from a certain kind of law enforcement to, to things that we find more important in our community. And I believe that this resolution does something very similar. It just deprioritizes um, these kinds of, of arrests um, so that um, we're not criminalizing personal behavior of this sort. Um, just as an aside, in the late 40s and early 50s, my father worked at Ypsilanti State Hospital and they were experimenting with hallucinogens on um, patients at the hospital. And it was the recreational use of um, these substances during the 60s that actually outlawed it all, ended all of that um, interesting uh, research that was being conducted that long ago um, that is starting to emerge again. So I, I hope that this doesn't lead to recreational misuse of these substances, but rather it really opens up the clinical and religious uses that um, have a framework for people to follow when they, when they um, delve into um, these experiences. But I intend to 
to support this this evening, and I'm glad to see it come forward. Councilmember Bannister. Yes, I uh, thank you, Mayor Taylor. Um, I am so proud to see, have the council members also interested in this, and I want to invite anyone who wants to co-sponsor with us. You are welcome and uh, encouraged to do so. And I do want to thank Chuck Ream for his leadership role on this all year long, and also Julie Barron, the director of the local decriminalized nature uh, branch and chapter. And um, I thought, uh, I don't think we've ever had so many medical professionals uh, come to the meeting and speak in favor of something that I really appreciate everyone's work in this area. Uh, that Dr. Uh, Diana Quinn, I thought those comments were really useful about um, wounds of racialized trauma that, you know, as Council Member Hainer mentioned, I mean, uh, Eaton mentioned that some of the religious uses of this have been criminalized over the years. And it's that very uh, use of it that can help uh, heal in a guided therapy, heal some of these uh, racialized traumas and wounds. So I'm very excited about it. And, you know, in addition to the speakers, we got letters from um, veterans associations, nonprofits that help veterans with their trauma and their suicide rates that are uh, urging us to do this tonight. And other letters from end of life nonprofits that are trying to uh, help with people dying with dignity and understanding their death. And, and we even got letters from over here at the Cleveland Clinic and Crace Western Reserve. So I, I thank uh, Chris Kurtz from, for, uh, for helping prepare those. So I, uh, that's it. And just again, I want to underline uh, if you'd like to co-sponsor and, and help Ann Arbor uh, be a leader in this movement, please do. Councilmember Grant. Thank you. Um, I want to also thank um, my constituent, Chuck Greenman. I'm so glad he was able to get on for public comment because he is like in my top 10 list of favorite public commenters, not just because he's one of my constituents. He is um, excellent people and proud to represent him. Um, and, and I appreciate him taking the time, all the advocates. Um, and I, you know, myself have worked with students who do research in this area. Um, so when I met with Chuck, I said, you know, this isn't maybe my highest priority, but when it comes to council, if it makes sense, I'm going to support it. And, and I will certainly stand by that word. Um, I have also worked um, with, with students who have had chronic depression that they just can't, no matter what they've tried, dig their way out of and who, um, who have said things to me that they don't, they don't expect to live till 10 years later. And, and I think we do, um, they can be very difficult for them to see a future and, and they've just tried everything. And it, it doesn't feel good to be on the other side of that and, and feel helpless. And it obviously is, is much worse for them and their families. So I believe that anything we can, we can do to help move this kind of treatment forward is worth, um, is, is worth putting our, putting our names behind and our, and our support behind. Um, so I'll be happy. And, and, and to the advocates, um, Thank you for all your support of the uh, United States Postal Service. Councilmember Romali. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to take my colleagues' um, offer and, and, and co sponsor this uh, resolution. Uh, thank you for that opportunity. Councilmember Griswold. Um, I would like to be listed as a co-sponsor, and I just want to repeat uh, the acknowledgement of Councilmember Bannister in initiating this very important resolution. So, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? is approved.